And uh, I would like to a little bit reverse this, this uh, approach and ask my second question to Victoras. When you are uh, down there in the cyberspace and you're not thinking whether this, uh, this piece of information is credible or not, or, or the source is credible or not, uh, but you're on the other side and you want to uh, look out for uh, malign actors and look for the bad guys, essentially saying. Uh, what is the difference in your thinking and what do you actually do to, to get them? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, sure. Uh, it's a very good question. So for that, I will show some slides to, to give a better understanding of what we do and what approach we take for that. Just shortly, so uh, now currently we're working in six countries, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, uh, Poland, uh, North Macedonia and United States. Uh, and uh, every month we analyze, uh, we receive about 1 million content pieces and we analyze uh, manually eight to 10,000 content pieces each month. Uh, we produce quite a lot of reports uh, from that, that I will share some processes how things work. So this is the main process, how information is analyzed. Uh, currently, we're analyzing in 26 languages, about 1 million content pieces per month. So we use AI, our technology, to do some process of automation. So AI cannot do everything. It's more as a feature of automation of some process. It's not a general AI. Uh, but it can help us to uh, create scoring mechanisms, uh, do the topic recognition, and put information in different uh, different shelves. So it would be easier for an analysis. Uh, this information comes in all kinds of shapes, uh, but we quite know well uh, what are the main narratives, uh, long-term narratives, also uh, the topic narratives that change over time, but we quite know them well, and it helps us a lot easier to find this information. Also, we use... Uh, Citizens and in Baltics, they are called Lithuanian elves or just elves. So they're active citizens that support us and help to analyze information that is received and also they cooperate with analysts. Then we have this labeling process where the analysis is done, each content piece is reviewed manually and then the reports are prepared, uh, articles are prepared and they being published to stakeholders and also to general media to inform citizens of what what's actually happening there. Uh, when we speak about uh, different domains, and um, uh, so now we use just two types of information. It, either it's disinformation and misinformation or misinformation. Uh, typically, the main difference is the intent or how often uh, that author or domain or organizations tend to spread this information. Uh, what I could suggest uh, for every uh, citizen person uh, is to acquire and use more of a critical thinking, to understand what's happening there. And it's actually quite easy. It's not something that is very complicated. Uh, so you, you need to always ask yourself, uh, first thing, uh, who is the source? Uh, who is the author? Uh, just click on him or her, check what he's writing about, uh, what other issues uh, is the author in the article? There are a lot of articles that have no author, and that already suggests that uh, there might be some credibility questions. Uh, is the source known? Uh, wh whom that source belongs? How it's financed? So some of these questions can be very easily Googled. If you just spot something in social media, a very popular link, uh, just Google it. And maybe you'll find the Wikipedia page. Maybe you'll find some about page or other information. So anytime you feel something is quite uh, emotional, or impactful, uh, the first step would be just, you know, think. And the second step is just to do a little bit of Googling. Maybe there is already uh, another think tank who already debunked that, or maybe there is a fact checker who already fact checked that, and you can easily find and verify if that is true or not. Uh, then the other thing is how, how the content is presented, what type of photos, uh, what kind of quotes, interviews, and is there any suspicion with that? Is the headline shocking or emotional? Uh, so 95% of disinformation comes in negative shape, in a negative sentiment. 
So it's quite rare to have some kind of uh, positive uh, disinformation. It still happens, but it's much, much uh, less often. Uh, and the third is uh, the circumstances, uh, when that is published, uh, what kind of event is connected to that. Uh, so when you think of, of these three steps on any content piece level or uh, news website uh, level, this can help you to understand what's actually happening there and why. Uh, this is used by our analysts and our community of volunteers who, who support us with their own work. And that works really, really well. Uh, we made a lot of iterations with different processes, and this is one of the really, really that works well. Uh, here is another suggestion of um, uh, Global Engagement Center. And this is a suggestion how to uh, just differentiate between uh, different sources. And that also helps a lot because if you know it's a government funded website like Kremlin funded websites or China funded websites, uh, there is uh, uh, quite a big chance that you need to be uh, more vigilant and check uh, what's happening there and uh, analyze it better. And then uh, when we analyze this, we publish reports of what's happening there, how much disinformation were in, in different countries, uh, what were happening on different peaks of disinformation, uh, what kind of narratives and soft narratives were the most popular ones uh, during that period and time. Uh, and also it's important to give some examples. So here's an, an, just an example from Estonia. So Estonian government increased uh, spending on defense and the Kremlin media picked it up as increase in offense and started to spread these uh, disinformation articles, which were even 34 articles with this case. And it's a clear uh, technique of disinformation forgery and hyperbolization in this case used. And we analyze and find many of these cases uh, from 600 to 1,500 uh, disinformation cases are found in Baltic states each month. So that's quite a lot of disinformation. So just to con conclude here, uh, what I would say is that uh, with, uh, when you want to under understand this three-step process, who, how, and when helps a lot. Uh, then there are all kind of community events like this one that you are participating in. This also helps a lot. You learn new things, you meet other people who can, uh, when, then you can ask them, then you can discuss and understand better what's happening. Critical thinking is one of the skills that in these days is very important. We all need to think more critically, not to get paranoid, but we really need to think more critically and to understand what is happening there. Uh, one more good example is uh, Get Bad News Game uh, that we done in cooperation with a draw company from Netherlands. And uh, the game was tested and de uh, developed together with Cambridge University. And that game teaches citizens for six disinformation techniques. And we adopted the game, localized it in Baltic countries. And this game is a quite a big success because it increases uh, in 15 minutes, it increases the resilience to disinformation by about uh, uh, 20% by the uh, research of Cambridge. So that's quite a big result. And currently we already have 100,000 people who have played the game in Baltic countries more than 140,000 times. So that's another uh, example how we can understand better what is happening there and how to do that at very large scale. Yes, I think that gamification of disinformation spotting and also other things, you know, like, I guess this is probably the, the best way out there to, to increase this, this awareness, especially among the youth, because it's honestly, it's great fun. And it's not only what you just mentioned, uh, the EU versus disinfo, also uh, offers tests how to spot uh, Russian disinformation out, uh, in, in the, the cyberspace. And uh, if, if we've got some gamers out there, you can also find related games on Steam who uh, will help you uh, to tell apart certain elements. This is, this is simply amazing. And I must admit that I really do like the model that you just presented a lot because it, it comprises a, a few things that are excellent. First of all, you've got engagement of the uh, civil society. This is indispensable. And you have employed the AI to, to help in your work. And 
uh, every practitioner knows how how much information do you sometimes have to deal with when you would like to just do simple media monitoring. It's, it's really, really a lot. And um, also what, what, I, what I like is that uh, there is a, a cross-country and uh, uh, cross-country analysis and it's, it's really cross-border. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's simply amazing to see how it changes from country to country. 